Uh, thank you once again, friends. It's a Sabbath. We thank the Lord for the Sabbath. And uh, we want to continue the series. Hopefully that will uh, God will bless us as we draw to the close of this series. So before we begin, allow me pray. We are praying. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We glorify your name for your goodness. You're merciful. You're gracious. Long-suffering unto us. You've kept us safe this week. And we are upon your holy Sabbath. We pray, Lord, that the blessings that you promised to share with your children upon this Sabbath, they will fall upon us. And every child of yours, Lord, will be listening to these messages of these times. May thy blessings be with us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, thank you. And Mama Mef, you can mute yourself. Okay, thank you, dear friends. We we begin today and I want to take us to the book of uh, I want to take us to the book of uh, Jeremiah 9. We are considering the education that the youth should get and we, we get to the book of Jeremiah 9. Jeremiah 9 from verses 23. Let me share my screen. Here it is. We are told that uh, in Jeremiah 9, we are told, Thus says the Lord, Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let him that, uh, neither let him, sorry. Thus says the Lord, Let not the wise man uh, glory in his wisdom. That says the Lord, let the wise man glory not in his wisdom, neither let him, uh, let the mighty man glory is in might, neither rich man glory in his riches. But let him that glory, glory in this, that he understand and knoweth me, that I am the Lord God, loving kindness, judgment, righteousness, and uh, in the earth for these things I delight, says the Lord. And so the Lord says that we should uh, glory that we have a knowledge of him. We should glory that uh, uh, we should not glory in any other thing. And uh, having the knowledge is very important and uh, that is what we want to consider today and i'll i'll check with us also the book of uh, the book of uh, philippians the book of philippians actually paul says uh, for the excellency of the knowledge of god he counts all things uh, but laws. I think we we do understand that verse. Yeah. So Paul says in the book of Philippians that for the excellency of the knowledge of God, he counts all things. Uh, but laws. Uh, that is the book of Philippians three. I read it from my Bible. Yeah, read it from my Bible here, the book of Philippians. And so this is the knowledge that uh, we desire our youths, we desire the children to have. It says that, uh, though I might also, the verses 8 says, Ye are doubtless, and I count all things but lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but done, that I may win, I may win Christ. For for the excellency of the knowledge of God and Christ, Paul counts 
all things but loss, all things but done. Why? The book of uh, John 17, 3 tells us that, uh, and this is life eternal, that they might know the, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou art sent. So for the, the knowledge of God is eternal life. And that is why uh, Paul count all laws for the excellency of the knowledge of God and on, on the and the knowledge of Christ. And we are not speaking about uh no, we are not just speaking about the head knowledge or having a a theory about God and about Christ, but uh having an experience, a practical knowledge which transform our lives. And that is what we we would want to see today as we consider uh as we consider the education that the youth should receive, the education of the youth. Okay, you will check on my screen and we'll read together as we continue. Uh -huh. Let's begin from the book of education and tells us really what education is. We are told that our ideas of education take too narrow and too low a range. There is a need of a broader scope, a higher aim. True education means more than a, a password of a, a certain course of study. It means more than a preparation for this, uh, a preparation for the life that is now, it has to do with the whole being. So true education, we are told, uh, many people have a narrow view uh, of what it contains. It means more than a preparation for the life that is now. So many people uh, consider education as a pursuit of certain course for this life. But we are told that uh, a, a right education is an education that do not just look into the life which is now, but uh, caters for a life which is beyond the life which we have now. And another thing that is important to note is that it, do, it does not also keep us off from the life which is now. It has to do with the whole being. So true education has to be with the whole being. And we will realize that it takes care of the three faculties of our system, of our body, and with the whole period of existence possible to man. Now, listen to what it is. It is said, it is the harmonious development of physical, mental, and spiritual powers. It prepares the students for the joy of service in this world. So this education, uh, it prepares the students for the joy of service in this world and for the higher joy of wider service in the world to come. And that is uh, the kingdom of God, when we will reign with God. That is uh, the right education, which prepares children to do service in this world and not only be satisfied and uh, with the service in this world, but look into doing service uh, in the world to come. We are told that when Adam came from the creator's hand, he bore in his physical, in him, he bore in his physical, mental, and spiritual nature, a likeness of, to his maker. God created man in his own image. That is Genesis 1.27. And it was his purpose that the longer man lived, the more fully he would reveal this image. It was the purpose of God that as man continued living, he will reveal his image. The more fully reflect the glory of the creator. All his faculties were capable of development. Their capacity and vigor were continually to increase. Vast was the scope offered for their exercise. Glorious, the field open to their research. So the, 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 they were given time and uh, the field was open for them, for their research to do what? To be able to uh, day by day reveal more the image of God in its fullness. 
the mystery of this visible universe, the wondrous works of him which in perfect uh, in knowledge invented man's study. Face to face, heart to heart communion with his maker was his high privilege. That was Adam. Face to face, heart to heart communion with his maker was his high privilege. Had he remained loyal to God, all this would have been his forever. That is how God created man in perfect. And he says that had he remained loyal to God, all this uh, communion face to face, heart to heart communion would have remained to be his forever. Uh, throughout eternal ages, uh, he would have continued to gain a treasure of knowledge to discover fresh springs of happiness and to obtain clearer and yet clearer conceptions of the wisdom, power, and the love of God. More and more fully will he have filled the object of his creator. More and more fully have reflected the creator's glory. But, now that was the beauty part of it. Then we are told, but by disobedient, this was forfeited. The image of God was forfeited. Through sin, the divine likeness was marred and well nigh obliterated. Man's physical powers were weakened. His mental capacity were lessened. His spiritual vision deemed. So man was no longer uh, healthy physically, mentally, and even spiritually. Uh, he, he had become subject to death. Yet the race was not left without hope. By infinite love and mercy, the plan of salvation had been devised and a life of probation was granted to restore in man the image of his maker. Listen carefully. To restore in man the image of his maker, to bring him back to the perfection, uh, to the perfection in which he was created to promote the development body, mind, and soul. Three things that are very key in the education of the youth and which will prepare them for this life and the life to come. Uh, development of body, mind, and soul. That is physical, mental, and spiritual. That the divine purpose in his creation might be realized this was the work of redemption. This is the object of education. So every education is objective. I know everything that we do has an objective. So the objective of the education that the rightful education that parents, that youths, that everyone should uh, be partaker of is to restore the uh, image of God which was lost to uh, uh, develop to develop body, mind, soul. Uh, this is the object of education, the great object of life. This is the great object of life. And this is the education. The education which takes all these uh, uh, is that which uh, the youth should pursue. Uh, since God, the source of such an education, who can give us such an education? We are told since God is the source of true no all true knowledge, it is, as we have seen, the first object of education to direct our minds to his own revelation of himself. So the very first object of education is to direct our minds to uh, his own, to the revelation of God himself. Adam and Eve received knowledge through direct communion with God. We saw that face-to-face, heart-to-heart communion, they received uh, their education. Uh, and they learned of him through his work. So they also learned uh, God through his work. We are told again, the Holy Scriptures are the perfect standard and as such should be given the highest place of uh, in education. So the youth who wants to get the right education to prepare them to be useful in this life and the life to come, then the standard for such an education 
is the Holy Scripture. To obtain education worth of the name, we must receive a knowledge of God, uh, uh, the Creator, and of Christ the Redeemer. For we learned in John 17, 3, that uh, the knowledge of God and of Christ is eternal life. So to obtain an education worth of the name, we must receive a knowledge of God, a knowledge of God, the creator of Christ, the redeemer, as they are revealed in sacred word. We are told that uh, uh, the knowledge of God is the foundation of true education. The education to be secured by searching the scripture is an experimental knowledge of the plan of salvation. It's not a, theolo a, a, a theological uh, knowledge, but rather it's an experimental knowledge of the plan of salvation. Such an education will, will restore the image of God in the soul. It will strengthen and uh, fortify the mind against temptation and fit the learner to become a co-worker with Christ in his mission of mercy to the world. So listen, a, a right education will restore in man the image of God. And uh, uh, besides that, along that, it will, also, uh, it will also help the learner to be a co-worker with Christ in his mission of mercy to the world. It will help the uh, the learner or the student to be a co-worker with Christ. Uh -huh. It will make him a member of heavenly family and prepare him to share the inheritance of his... Uh, 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 it will make him a member of heavenly family. So this education will make uh, the learner a member of the family of heaven and prepare him to share the inheritance of the saints in light. That is COL 42, paragraph two. The true higher education is gained by studying and obeying the word of God. That is the source of the a right education that uh, the youth should look for. Uh, the elderly uh, should direct their children to look for. But when God's word is laid aside for books that do not lead to God and kingdom of heaven, the education acquired is perversion of the name. Yeah, so the object of education is to restore in man the image of God. And this is to prepare uh, the, 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 the persons concerned, the learners, the students for the life to come. Uh, it's to prepare the learners for the life to come. Yeah, uh, we are told education for missionary work. Remember that uh, they do, that education should, uh, should make the learner to be a co-worker with Christ in his mission of mercy to the world. And that is why the rightful education is uh, also a training of missionaries for Christ. And we said that we are co-workers with Christ, not because we go to the pulpits and uh, preach. No, we have learned how we can be co-workers with Christ, even being faithful in the home duties, uh, being a blessing in the society, and having an influence that the influence that we impact by us living the truth, uh, living by the standards of God, we are co-workers with Christ. The life we live is summons to others. And so that is very interesting. And those who also, this education will lead to go and uh, educate others and uh, concerning the kingdom of God. True education is a missionary training. Every son and daughter of God is called to be a missionary. How? Every son and daughter of God is called to be a co-worker with God. No one uh, should feel at liberty to uh, profess to be the child of God and yet uh, doesn't uh, is not a co-worker with God. 
We are called to the service of God and our fellow men. And to fit us for this service should be the object of our education. So every education we receive, its object should be fitting us to be missionaries, to be uh, co-workers with Christ in his mission of mercy to this world. This object should be kept in view by Christian parents and teachers. We know not in what line our children may serve. So we are not called to all serve in one line, but we, we are told that we don't know what the line uh, that the children may serve. They may spend their lives within the circle of the home. They may engage in life's common vocations. We talked about that largely yesterday or go as teachers of the gospel to the heathen land. But all are alike called to be missionaries for God, ministers of mercy to the world. So if the education our children are receiving are not helping them to be co-workers with Christ, then uh, we have to be in question. The children and youth with their fresh talents, energy, courage, they are quick as a Respectabilities are loved of God, and it is has to bring them into harmony with divine agencies that are to obtain an education that will help them to stand by the side of Christ in unselfish uh, service. So, restoring the image of God in man. Uh, helping us to be co-workers with Christ. And then it continues by says, saying, and those who would be workers together with God must strive for perfection of every organ of the body and quality of mind. Wow. So I think uh, this makes sense now how we are going to be co-workers with God, with Christ. He says, and those who would be workers together with God must strive for perfection of every organ of body and quality of mind. True education is to prepare of the physical, mental, and moral powers for the performance of everyday duty. It is, it is the training of body, mind, soul for divine service. It is the training of body, mind, soul for divine service service yeah when we will at uh, the image of god will be restored in us then we will be fit for uh the divine the divine service the divine service education in the nature uh in the book education we are told that uh uh god was the uh the the teacher and the nature was the lesson book we are told so also a new interest may be given to the work of the garden or the exertion in field or wood, as the pupils are encouraged to remember those shut uh, in from these pleasant places and to share with them the beautiful things of nature. Working the soil is one of the best kinds of employment, calling the muscles into action and uh, resting the mind that is developing the physical uh uh the phys the physical well-being of a person which we found that by disobedient uh was adulterated and uh also resting the mind that is restoring uh the mental powers which were lessened Studying agricultural lines should be the ABC of the education given in our schools. We believe that in our schools, uh, in schools, youths are, educa are educated. So we are told that agriculture, and agriculture, why? Because it restores the physical powers, the physical uh, uh, strength that was lost by man. This is the very first work that should be entered upon. Our schools should not depend upon imported produce for grain and vegetables and the fruits uh, so essential to health. Our youth need an education in felling trees and tilling the soil as well as uh, literally lines. So the youth should not be 
uh, comfortable with just taking uh, studies in other lines like literature and science and all other lines, which are also good. But uh, the very first thing they should do is to restore uh, their physical uh, powers, which uh, was lost by engaging in garden work, as we see here. Different teachers should be appointed to oversee a number of students in their work, and should we are drawing principles from this. This is 60, 179, uh, paragraph two. Time is too short now to accomplish that which might have been done in past generation. But even in these last days, we can do much to correct the existing evil in the education of the youth. So today, there is seen an existing evil in the education of the youth. It is perverse. How? Uh, as we will see, in the, we will, uh, we'll see that uh, it is perverse by students interesting themselves by just uh, learning in other lines, engaging so much in other lines that they cannot have a balanced mind. Uh, they're overtasking one side and so it's not an wholesome education. And this cannot prepare youths, cannot prepare people uh, for to do the service of God or cannot uh, restore in man the image of God. We are told, but even in these last days, we can do much to correct the existing evil in the education of the youth. And because time is short, we should be in earnest. We should be in earnest and work zealously to give the young an education consistent with our faith. We should give our us youths, we should receive an education consistent with our faith. We are reformers. We desire that our children should study the best advantage. In order to do this, employment should be given them, which will call into exist, exercise the muscles for physical strength. Daily systematic labor should constitute a part of the education of the youth, even at this late period. Yeah, so we are living in a, a world where the education of the youth is perverse. But we are told as reformers, we should give uh, we should give an education which uh, will uh, engage the exercise of the muscles and daily a systematic labor should constitute a part of the education of the youth even at this late, uh, late period. Much can now be gained in this way. In following this plan, the students will realize a laxicity of spirit and vigor of thought. And it, by the way, it's for our own good, and in a given time can accomplish more mental labor than they could by studying alone. So you see, by engaging in physical labor, uh, or in physical, uh, yeah, in physical labor, they will gain uh, mental vigor, mental strength to be able to occupy, uh, to be able to occupy uh, more than just engaging in studies. And thus they can leave school with, with constitutions unimpaired and with the strength and courage to per persevere in any position where the provi providence of God may place them. So many car many uh, slaves of circumstances because they were not just educated aright to be uh, all round, to work on their physical strength as they work also uh, on their mental, uh, uh, as they work on their mental, that is doing studies. Brain and muscle must be tasked properly in if health and vigor are to be maintained. So if we decide to have good health, then brain and muscles must be tasked uh, proportionately in a balanced way. The youth can, be, uh, can then bring to the study of the word of God healthy perception and well-balanced nerves. They will have wholesome thoughts and uh, can retain precious things that are brought from the word. 
So the reason why we are having memory labs and uh, we are struggling a lot to capture a lot of things, it's because we have not engaged, uh, we do not have a balanced mind. Uh, the youth engage into studies a lot and they do not uh, uh, love duty, which works in strengthening the muscles and the nerves. They will digest its truth and as a result, will have brain power to discern what is truth. Then as occasion demands, they can give to every man that ask a reason for the hope that is in them with meekness and fear. So for them to be able to retain that which they have studied, we can study the word of God, but without engaging the muscles, uh, we will not it will not have a place in our mind. And so we will not give a reason for our faith as required uh, by God that we should give a, we should be ready to give the reason for our faith. I took an example uh, in a school, Avondale, uh, how God designed that they should work so that the students will be restored physically as they were uh, doing other work, uh, studying other lines, and taking other courses. This is this is a room within her vast boundaries for school. I have just talked. Uh, this is testimony to the church, volume six, one seventy eight, paragraph one. There is a room within her vast boundaries for school to be established, where grounds can be cleared and land cultivated. So the very first thing that was considered when they were looking for schools, whether there was enough space, enough land where, ground, where they would cultivate. Why? So that the children would be laborers as they work to strengthen their muscles and uh, engage their physical strength. This work is essential to the, edu to the education most favorable to spiritual advancement. So they knew that work in working, cultivating the land was very essential uh, to the advancement of spiritual life. So we see how our spiritual life will continue to be deemed if we will not learn to uh, engage in physical, engage in physical uh, work. Uh -huh. It continues, for nature's voice is the voice of Christ, teaching us a, a, a numberable lesson of love and power and submission and perseverance. Some do not appreciate the value of agriculture work. This should not, plan, uh, this should not plan for our schools, for they will hold everything from advancing in right lines. In the past, their influence have been an hindrance. The school farm uh, is to be regarded as a lesson book in nature from which the teachers may draw their object lesson. Our students are to be taught that Christ who created the world and all things that are therein is the life and light of every living thing. The life of every child and youth who is willing to grasp the opportunities of a receiving a proper education, the life of every child and youth, if we are desiring to receive a proper education, will be made thankful and happy while at school by the things upon which his eyes shall rest. And that should be found in nature, outside, on the grounds, as they will be working uh, on the grounds. We'll see how Christ also uh, received his education, the education of Christ, our, because we know Christ is our perfect example. In John 7, 15, we are told that the Jewish marvel saying, how knoweth this man let us, having never learned? And they were astonished. Yeah, so the Jewish marvel saying, how knoweth this man let us, having never learned? So uh, did it does this really mean that Jesus did not really learn? No. Jesus learned uh, and his source of education was his father. 
uh, he received a divine education and we'll see how that education was. And they were astonished at his doctrine for he taught them as one that had authority, not as the scribes. So he, he never went to their schools, uh, but yet he taught as one with authority. Isaiah 53 verses 2 says, For he show up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form, no comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. That was Christ. Uh, he shall grow up before him as a tender plant. So he grew as a, a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor calm, calmliness, and we, when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Uh, Luke give an account of Jesus Christ, and we'll talk about this more tomorrow when we'll be handling about Christ as a youth. He says, and the child grew work strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Yeah, so Christ was filled with wisdom. Jesus followed. So we'll see how did was he filled with wisdom? How did he receive his education that made the made him to teach with authority, that made the people to uh, really wonder and ask, from whence knoweth this man let us, having never learned in our schools? Yeah, so we are told Jesus followed the divine plan of education. Wow. We've seen the divine plan of education right in Eden, uh, which it was worked to restore in man the physical, the mental, and the spiritual. So this is what Jesus worked with. And we see how he was teaching with power. And the Bible recorded that uh, he grew work strong in spirit, filled with wisdom. Yeah, so the school of his time, when they are magnifying of things, small, they are belittling of things great, he did not seek. His education was gained directly from heaven-appointed sources. Heaven-appointed sources from useful work. That was one of the, well, that is one of the uh, heaven-appointed sources of getting a right education. Uh, from useful work, number one, from studying of scriptures and of nature. And from the experience of life, God's lesson book, full of instruction to all whom bring to them the willing hand, the seeing eye, and the understanding heart. That is Education 77, paragraph 2. Uh, so we see that useful, uh, useful work that was development of physical powers. Study of the scriptures, development of spiritual powers. Study of nature, development of mental powers. Did this? This is what we saw in, uh, in, uh, in uh, Eden. God instituted this to uh, fully restore in man his image, and this is how Christ gained his education. And we shall see more of this tomorrow, uh, as we'll consider in Christ as a youth how. Uh, useful work develop his physical powers and uh, how uh, the studying of scripture developed his spiritual powers and how studying of nature developed his mental powers. That is very interesting. The education that Christ himself pursued and by this alone, the people were able to notice that he was teaching with authority more than uh, he had authority, not as the scribes. He was, to them, he was more learned, more than the Christ. Why? The secret of this was he was receiving this divine uh, education, which he was to restore in him, uh, which is to restore in us the image of God. Yeah, developing the whole system of the human being. Education and science, true education does not ignore the value of science, scientific knowledge, or literature. But that is what everyone uh, is looking after. But I find this, and 
quite interesting. Yeah, it's, it doesn't belittle, it doesn't ignore. Christ himself studied science. He was not, uh, he was not ignorant of, scientific, uh, of science and literature. Uh, but above information, it values powers, above power, goodness, above intellectual acquirements, character. So it's not just uh, intellectual acquirement that is needed, uh, that is needed, but rather character. The world does not so much need men of great intellect as of noble character. I say amen to this. This is what the world needs, men of character. And what will produce the character in us that is required, the rightful education that uh, takes care of our physical well-being, our mental well-being, and our spiritual. Yeah, so just being intelli uh, Ill intelligent and all this, that is okay, but it is not enough. The greatest want of the world is the want of men, men who will not be bought or sold, men who in their innermost souls are true and honest, men who do not fear to call sin by its right name, men whose conscience is true to duty as needle to the poor, men who will stand for the right though the heavens fall. What can produce such men? It is the rightful education. But such a character is not the result of accident. It is not due to special favors or endorsement of providence. A noble character is the result of self-discipline, of the subjection of the lower uh, to the higher nature, the surrender of self for the service of the love of God and man. In a knowledge of God, all true knowledge and real development have their source. So if we want to have real development of character, which the world needs, uh, then we have to have uh, the knowledge which is from God. Wherever we turn, in the physical, mental, or in the spiritual realm, in whatever we behold, apart from the blight of sin, this knowledge is revealed. Whatever line of in investigation we pursue, within a sincere purpose to arrive at the truth, we are brought into touch with the unseen. Mighty intelligence that is working in and through all, the mind of man is brought into communion with the mind of God, the finite with the infinite. The effect of such communion in body and mind and soul is beyond estimate. Uh, education 14 paragraph 2 coming to an end perfect example from the master teacher let's see he uh, had uh, is a disciple the most complete illustration of Christ's method as a teacher is found in the training of the 12 past disciples upon these men what rest weight responsibilities he had chosen them as men who he should imbued with his spirit and who could be fitted to carry forward his work on earth when he should leave it. To them, above all others, he gave the advantage of his own companionship. Through personal association, he impressed himself upon these children co -laborers. The life was manifest, was manifested, says John the Beloved, and we have seen it and bear witness. Uh, communion with the master teacher as this still tells us how he was able to uh, educate the disciples. It was uh, by communion with him uh, that they received the education. Only by such communion, the communion of mind uh, with mind, heart with heart, of the human with the divine, can be communicated that vital uh, can can be communicated that vitalizing energy, which is uh, which it is the work of true education to impart. It is only life that begets life. So if uh, the education that the disciples received was by communi communion with Christ, it was by uh, actually uh, learning the experience of Christ and how. Christ was doing these things. And John was able to say that uh, the life, his life was manifested to them. 
uh, and we have seen it and bear witness. They bear witness of the life of Christ. Why? Because they they were with their, him, they learned from him, and we've seen how Christ received his education. And so the disciples who were to take his responsibility, the responsibilities that he was to live with them, learned from him. Uh, we are told whatever line of investigation we pursue, with a sincere purpose to arrive at truth, we are brought in touch with the unseen, mighty intelligence that is working in through all. The mind of man is brought in communion with the mind of God, the infinite with the infinite. The effect of such communion on body and mind and soul is beyond estimate. Uh, in the training of his disciples, the Savior followed the system of education established at the beginning. We had seen that system. The 12 first chosen with a few others. By the way, what was that education which was uh, uh, instituted in the beginning? We learned in the education that it was a face-to-face, heart-to-heart, mind-to-mind communion. So it is communion with the, the Savior that they learned and they received their education. So even us, it will be communion with Christ that we learn, uh, we'll be educated. And we've seen how we get, we, we how we'll do this, how we will be in communion with Christ uh, to be able to be restored physically, mentally, and spiritually. In the training of his disciples, the Savior followed the system of education established in the beginning. The 12 first chosen with a few others who thought through ministry to their needs were from time to time connected with them, formed the family of Jesus. They were with him in the house, at the table, in the closet, in the field. I, I hope we are following and seeing how uh, they had close communion and it is thus that they received their education. And even us, it will be with close communion, close relationship with Christ that we will be receiving the right education. They were with him in the house, at the table, in the closet, in the field. They accompanied him on his journeys, shared his trials, hardship, and as much as in them was entered into his work. Sometimes he taught them as they sat together on the mountain, sometimes beside the sea or from the fishermen's boat, sometimes as they walked by the way. Whenever he spoke to the multitude, the disciples formed the inner circle. They pressed close beside him that they might lose nothing of his instruction. They were attentive listeners, eager to understand the truth. They were to teach all in the lands and uh, ages. Uh, Jesus, we are told that Jesus was, the, was with them full time. We shall com we should commune with the master teacher fully, not just for some few hours or a day, a week. And it is thus that we will be receiving our education. And this brings me to a, a remembrance of, uh, 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 to remember, this brings me to remember the man Enoch. Enoch walked with God faithfully, and the Bible accounts for his righteousness. And uh, allow me open the book of, uh, uh, finish with the book of uh, uh, Last Day Event. Last Day Event. So, yeah, Last Day Event. 70 last day event 71 paragraph 1 it tells us of how Enoch walked with God. Yeah, you can as uh, I let me share my screen. We finish here. Uh oh. yeah. 
Yeah, we are told uh, the example of Enoch. Enoch walked with God 300 years previous to his translation to heaven. Enoch walked with God uh, Okay, Enoch walked with God 300 years previous to his translation to heaven and the state of the world Yeah, and the state of the world was not then more favorable for the perfection of Christian character than is it today. And how did Enoch walk with God? That is the question. How did Enoch walk with God? We are told that the situation of the world those days uh, were not favorable, were not favorable, uh, were not favorable for the trans for the perfection of Christian character than is it today. We are saying that the rightful education which we should receive uh, uh, should perfect our character to restore in man the image of God. That is the object of the right education. And so this education we see if uh, Enoch perfected his character, then he must have received this education. We are told how and how did Enoch walk with God? Answer, he educated his mind and heart to ever feel that he was in the presence and uh, of God. And when in perplexities, his prayers will ascend to God to keep him. So he, he received an education. He educated his mind to ever feel that he was in the presence of God, to ever feel that he was in the presence of God. That is so nice. It seems to me that he was uh, in communion with the heavens. Every moment, every time he ever felt that he was in the presence of God, he refused to take any course. He refused to take any course. He refused to take any course that will offend his God. He kept the Lord continually before him. He kept the Lord continually before him. He would pray, teach me thy way, O Lord. What is thy pleasure concerning me? What shall I do to honor thee, my God? Thus he was constantly, uh, yeah, thus it, he was con constantly sh shaping his way and course in accordance to with God's commands, commandments. And he had perfect confidence and trust in his heavenly father that he would help him he had no thought or will of his own he was all, all it was all submerged in the will of the father uh, and we're told that uh, Enoch is a representative of those who are living in those in these days and so just as Enoch he educated his mind so at the youth of this time we should receive a rightful education that will enable us to educate our mind, to ever feel uh, that we are in the presence of God. We should uh, look at the divine plan of education that was a face-to-face -face communion, a heart-to-heart -heart communion, mind with mind. Uh, and that is by uh, holding communion with the heavens, ever feeling that we are in the presence of God. And we've seen some of the things that will help us to achieve this, engaging into uh, work for physical strength and those as we st studying the scriptures for spiritual uh, development and then uh, for, mental uh, for mental and spiritual development. So may God bless you uh, as we consider all this. Uh, God bless you all as we consider all this. May we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We glorify your name for your goodness. We thank you for your provision. 
for restoring us back to your rightful, rightful positions that we should have and choosing to give us a rightful education that we should accept and we should influence others as well with the life we'll be living. When we we'll, uh, allow your glory to shine in us, and then it will be uh, it will be shed forth to others. We pray that this is the experience that will allow every youth to have, to have a rightful education, a rightful training that will restore all these faculties of the body to its completeness. May your blessings be with us this Sabbath, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.